Hey everyone, welcome to today's webinar. I'm Shaito Shah and I'll be your host today. So today we're gonna to be talking about um, your guide to self-service reporting and dashboards. And I know it's a topic that a lot of you are um, very familiar with because you spend a lot of time creating these reports and dashboards and slide decks. So we're gonna hopefully help you out a little bit and um, tell you more about how you can make that process more efficient and get some time back on your calendar. Um, so before we get started, let's go through a couple of housekeeping items. On your right-hand side of the screen, you should see a control panel. Um, in that control panel, you'll see a questions box. So feel free to ask your questions in that box. Um, we will be taking questions throughout the webinar, so don't feel like you have to wait until the end. Um, we will also be sending out a recording of the webinar along with the slide deck, so don't worry about taking notes or um, clicking screenshots of the slide. Um, and then, um, we want to get you guys involved um, in the webinar, so we'll push out a couple of polls. Um, so please um, answer those questions. Um, we'll just make it make this more interesting. Um, so um, next slide, please. Okay. Um, before we jump into the content, let's go through a little safe harbor statement. We may be making some forward-looking statement. Please understand that those carry some risks and uncertainty with them. So to the extent you are making purchasing decision today, do it based on the software that exists today, uh, which will be shown to you um, in the demo portion of the webinar. So with that, let's introduce our speakers today. Um, I've already mentioned my name. I have been with Workday for almost three years now. Um, prior to that, I was in FP&A, spent a good decade in FP&A. Um, so definitely understand, you know, your guys' pain points and of what you may be going through creating these reports and dashboards. I've myself spent countless hours doing that work. Um, okay, with us, um, we have Corey and Eric. Um, Corey, do you want to introduce yourself quickly to our audience? Yeah, no, that's okay. Um, so I'm Corey. Uh, I currently reside here up in the Twin Cities in Minnesota, if my accent hasn't given that away. Um, I have more of a financial and accounting background in the construction and real estate industry. Uh, started my career in public accounting and then uh, transitioned and took an opportunity with uh, Harris Companies, uh, which is headquartered here in St. Paul. And uh, yeah, when there I am a cost accountant and planning analyst. So help the project managers out with their projects within our ERP system. And then on the planning analyst side, help with the budgeting and forecasting process within our company. Awesome. Happy to have you, Corey. Um, Eric is going to be doing our demo portion today. Um, Eric, you want to introduce yourself to our audience? Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, Eric Zimmerman, uh, based in Arizona. Uh, I was uh, been with Workday for about five years, going on six years. Uh, prior to that, 20 years in FP&A. I was director of FP&A for a large software company here in Arizona, where we were also a customer of Workday Adaptive Planning. So I'm very familiar with the solution in the practical terms of how it helps uh, finance uh, professionals. Awesome. Thank you, Eric. Um, all right, with that, let's get um, Corey to tell us a little bit about Harris, because um, I'm, I'm sure a lot of our audience doesn't know what the company is about so corey would you mind giving our audience a little uh, overview of what um harris says yeah definitely so harris like i've said before uh we're headquartered here in st paul but we have 12 locations throughout the u.s and um you know within our business we have three lines of business uh that is construction service and controls on the construction side, those are going to be the large commercial projects and some of the notable projects that we've worked on uh, have been the U.S. Bank Stadium here in Minnesota and then currently the Raiders Stadium in Las Vegas, which I think they're working on wrapping up. And then um, we also do some work with conveyors and then we have a design studio and um, yeah, we do a little bit of fabrication and manufacturing to do as much pre-construction as we can with our projects. Um, and yeah. Awesome. And then um, you've uh, been working with um, adaptive planning for, I guess, at least um, over a year. And then 
from what I remember from our conversation maybe a week or two ago that you were part of kind of the implementation team and yeah, so, yeah so I've yeah I've been with Harris for a year and a half now and actually um, one of the reasons why I took the opportunity with Harris is because during the interview they had talked about okay we're gonna we're gonna work on implementing uh, this new uh, budgeting forecasting software um, and it's also going to help us do some business analysis um, from a financial perspective. And so I took the took the position and yeah, day one, it was uh, pretty much from ground zero as far as, you know, meeting the implementation team with Adaptive and, you know, fast forward now to a year and a half later, um, you know, we do all our budgets and forecasts with an Adaptive and um you know we definitely try and use all the capabilities that adaptive insights has to offer which will be kind of going over it seems like yeah well thank you corey um yeah as corey mentioned we will be uh doing a lot of um we'll be showing you guys you know a lot of uh, different types of reporting uh whether it be web reporting um you know, Excel, Word, PowerPoint decks. Um, we'll also be talking about the audience that's consuming these reports. So whether it's an internal audience, you're sending management report out to your executive team or whether it's board decks or it's going externally. Um, and then lastly, we will be um, talking or touching on pain points that are associated with all creating all these reports. So, um, you know, well, hopefully um, Eric can um, show us in the demo portion how, you know, he can alleviate some of that frustration that, you know, you all go through while creating these reports. So with that, um, I want to push out our first poll um, just so that we kind of understand, you know, where you're spending your biggest time right now. So what is your biggest time saying, whether it's gathering data, confirming accuracy. You know, my favorite one is ensuring consistency where, you know, you're always fighting with sales or um, marketing where you're saying, you know, these are marketing numbers or sales numbers, these are not finance numbers and so on and so forth. Or is it formatting your reports? So, um, Corey, how, how would you answer this? Like uh, before, I guess before Adaptive, um, what was your biggest time sink? Uh, well, Luckily for me, I don't know what the uh, pre-life was like before Adaptive, but I, I will say that, you know, before we implemented Adaptive, you know, the, the controllers and the senior accountants, they would have to go into the PDFs and do a lot of manual data entry. Um, mm -hmm. So they would they would have spent a lot of time gathering the data. Um, you know, now that we've implemented Adaptive and, you know, we have the Office Connect feature, Mm -hmm. um, you know, Adaptive pretty much does all the work for you as long as you have the account set up and um, everything's mapped correctly. And, um, you know, whereas now I get to spend a little bit more time making sure that all the reports tie out and, um, you know, I and even with that, I, I don't have to spend as much time on. And so it's I would say it's more on the formatting the reports too and making sure that they're they look the way that they need to yeah um yeah definitely i remember that from my days in a pna where you know you spend so much time formatting it and something changes then you have to reformat it and it, it takes up a lot of time um so um based on the results are um you know not having a system in place i guess a lot of our um, viewers are saying gathering data which is understandable um I remember trying to get data from multiple systems, trying to, you know, ticking and tying all that, making sure it was all accurate, and then uh, doing all the reporting. So it took lo the longest amount of time that takes is without having a system in place, it's probably gathering data. So as I mentioned, we're talking about, uh, you know, different types of reporting. We'll be talking about the different uh, kind of audience that consume the data um, and your pain points, but we're gonna, um, in terms of talking about different types of reporting, how it's consumed, uh, we will kind of take the approach of having three different uh, personas, right? So we'll talk about um, reporting from a CEO's perspective, then a CFO's perspective, and then a financial analyst's perspective. So let's start with our first um, persona. So let's say that we have a new CEO 
on board and um, he or she is looking to get what's just kind of get an understanding of what's going on in the business and kind of getting a visualization on some of the key performance across a set of KPIs, um, you know, um, just trying to get insight into what's happening. So Eric, how would you, would you be able to show us how our audience can, you know, be uh, using um, dashboards to show a CEO what, um, what's going on in the business? Absolutely. So let's do that right now. So I wanted to just, for, uh, before we kind of get into the, the, this, this idea of just taking a lot of time to actually get the data, I just want to spend 20 seconds on this. Within Adaptive, you have the ability to integrate your data, whether it's on a scheduled basis or you're just importing from like an Excel flat file. You don't have to contract with a third party in, uh, integrator. Uh, it's all here. We have an integrations platform. We have 5,200 customers. Uh, and you know, we've got hundreds and hundreds of uh, knowledgeable connections that we've already made to various systems. Uh, most of our customers are bringing in three to five different data sources. So I totally get that, that you know, the, the hunting and gathering for data and bringing that in takes a lot of time. We, we have uh, worked on that pain point in, in creating these data integrations uh, that this is really the only place where IT tends to get involved is, is knowing those different systems and how to integrate. But once the integration happens, master data management is automatic. You, you have new accounts get created, new departments, all of that can uh, easily flow in uh, to Adaptive. So I just wanted to briefly talk about that because now that, you know, kind of have that understanding of now the data is here, right? And so we can now create dashboards and visualizations off of that. Because it's in the cloud, uh, it renders on any device. So if your CEO has a, uh iPad or a Surface and they want to uh, to get to this information, all of the information that you see here, whether it's a summary level for the CEO, maybe they're looking at some budget information with waterfall by location for revenue. With, with a workday adaptive planning, what you have the ability to do is layer in actual performance with a forecast, a budget, you know, whatever that might be. You have as many uh, options as, as you want. Um, so being able to drill in and drill through. So if, if the CEO wants to see, well, what is this 8.5 million by location or by product? A simple navigation to those dimensions uh, will be able to give them self-service to drill in on that next level of granularity. Uh, and likewise, if they're wanting to see, okay, well, what customers are purchasing our A1 product, uh, that next level of, of drilling, allows them to do some of that self-service. Now, some of us on the audience are probably saying, yeah, my CEO will never do self-service. They're gonna want me to create these reports. And, and we have answers for you uh, on that as well. But the idea is to visualize the data, to make it quick and easy. And that is a hallmark of, of adaptive. If you wanna have data entry in the same sheet as your, your dashboards, uh, long you know, kind of uh, tops down, bottoms up. Uh, the idea is to make these very easy to work with, to create new ones. So if I wanted to create a new one from scratch for my CEO, and, and I always joke that every quarter or every uh, board of directors meeting, there tends to be a, a KPI of the month club. Um, but if there's a new KPI that needs to you know, have a dashboard, it literally is drag and drop. What you will see with, with uh, Adaptive is that there are, there's no coding. We have formulas for, for modeling and things like that, but there's no code, there's no SQL code, there's no, oh, we need to have this uh, high level IT. It is literally drag and drop. So if I wanted to create a quick report on our three lines of revenue, and you can change the colors, you can change the axes, you can do all the kind of the Excel functionality uh, right here on this pane. If you wanted to m mess around with the data, uh, you could do that, the, the scale, et cetera. All that's right here. And then when you're done, you're done. 
But this is what's really interesting is now all of that dimensionality, including any of my personal dimensions, uh, gives you have that ability and to, to drill down in on that as well. So there's things that we as, a, as adaptive have already built for you, the financial intelligence, we allow you to configure, and then there's that, that built-in functionality, kind of out-of-the-box functionality that exists after that build. So from, from the use case of a CEO coming in, wanting to see something new, it's very easy to create a new dashboard. Uh, you can publicize this and publish this out. Uh, you can take snapshots in time and send emails. Uh, there, there's a lot of that flexibility uh, within it. In fact, if you wanted to present right directly from the dashboards, uh, you can just go into presentation mode and you can present like you would you know, a slide deck. Um, anyways, uh, so there's a lot of, lot of that uh, you know, self-service for a CEO. Uh, and then if the CEO wants something different, which I don't think anybody's ever worked with a CEO that they've wanted it the exact same thing every time, uh, it's very easy to create something new. Okay. And so, so Eric, I'm you, sure you, yeah. sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to ask, I'm sure you've interacted with a lot of our, um, you know, prospects and customers. And what are some of the questions that you've always gotten um, when you show them this? Um, is there like specific questions that they ask um, in terms of um, yeah, getting the CEO a lot, a to lot be of them, more self-sufficient? Um, I mean, that, that tends to be more of a culture of the CEO. Some are, some are, mm -hmm amazing CEOs. I've worked with some amazing CEOs that, you know, you show them a dashboard and tell them that you can, you can click on this and drill in. I mean, the next thing you're, you're getting is, oh, I'd like to know, know how to build these, uh, mm -hmm. where the other CEOs still want it on paper form. So, you know, with however many we have, there's probably 180 people in attendance right now. I'm sure that there's 180 different CEOs with, uh, you know, different <laughs> ways sure. of doing it. And that the, the flexibility is there uh, mm -hmm. to, to handle the the issues. I mean, this is just a modern platform. And I think what, what I typically get from questions is, oh, we have a BI. We already have a BI. Uh, and I always say, that's great. You know, you can use the BI platform you guys have. Uh, creating these charts, is, it's not an issue uh, to have multiple places for, for the data to reside. My only thing is, I like this because you can also bring in the budget with all of the detail of the budget. Or if you mm -hmm. see some, you know, something's going out of whack with uh, with your trends, uh, you now can be in the solution where you can make those adjustments. Where with traditional BI, you don't have that ability to kind of go in and make adjustments on the fly. And that's really where uh, where this kind of platform approach with uh, business intelligence layered on it, it, it is it's there. So and then um, uh, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, I've worked with a lot of different C CEOs too. Um, some were more detail oriented than others, and some really wanted everything on paper. Um, yeah. Okay. And and I, and there is there is daily. Uh, there's a question that came through. There is daily. Uh, you can do as you know whatever the frequency of the update is. Uh, we have some customers that uh, update some parts of their business on a on a like a 15 minute basis, uh, where others are doing daily. Uh, so it really just depends on your your specific industry and and how often you want something updated, uh, but you can you can have it updated as you know midday. Uh, a lot of times during close close week, uh, mm -hmm. the updating frequency is there, and and any time you can go in and just click the button to go and grab the the refresh data. So I would work with my accounting team. And uh, if there was a big entry that was made in a, in a close, I would just go and, and refresh the feed uh, so that we all had, had that fresh data from the ERP system. Got it. Okay. Um, and then, uh, Corey, um, so I know um, when we had talked in the past, you kind of mentioned that, you know, you um, were part of these uh, meetings with the um, executive team. So, you know, have you used this functionality during your meeting to show them um, certain types of data? Yeah, definitely. Um, every month we have uh, what we call our business unit reviews. Uh, and we, you know, set, a, set aside time each month to, you know, we have a controls dashboard, a construction dashboard, and a service dashboard. And um, 
Yeah, with that, I mean, and since we started that, it's just, you know, the business unit leaders, um, you know, they kind of go through how they did for the month and where they're at and where they see the business heading for the rest of the year. Awesome. Okay. And, and one thing I do want to talk about, if, if, I, if I can real quick, you know, the yep. idea of this showing the total company based on users' permissions, based on the security of the individual, you can have those individual line managers, let's say you wanted a, a, a dashboard about, uh, lo, you know, location or I've got specific project that I want people to see. When you log into the dashboard, you can you can have them see only what they have permission to see. So if you have multiple subsidiaries and you have a financial analyst on each subsidiary, you can make that available. And so if they were to come in, you know, and they or, or you have somebody that's a responsible just for the Sales North department, when they come in, all they would see would be Sales North data. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can provide that kind of security level. Yeah. Yep. Great. Um, great. Okay. Um, thank you, Eric, for that demo. Um, we'll move on to our second um, persona perspective. Um, we're going to be looking at things from a um, chief financial officer's perspective. Um, you know, I remember from my uh, days in fp &A, um, I had one CFO who was very, very detailed and always wanted to play around with um, data and slice and dice everything I provided in, in you know, his own ways. Um, so it was always like I was giving him this big pivot table and that, that way he could, you know, play around with the data. So, um, Eric, do you want to talk to our audience about um, web reporting and how, you know, that can be used for mm -hmm whether it's ad hoc analysis or variance analysis when they're talking to their, um, you know, business partners. Yeah. Um, let me, let me do that. So most ERP systems consume data like an elephant and uh, release it like a mouse. And so the idea of having all of the data, we talked quickly about integration in in, a, in, a, in one place, and then the ability to report on it, either dashboards or web-based reporting, and then we'll get into our Excel uh, Office Connect. But the idea of having your model, so there's, there's lots of solutions out there that are heavy software solutions that are legacy, and everybody is doing it, their modeling in Excel, and then they're loading the output into uh, into some software package that's huge and bulky and then you never see what makes the sausage if you will what makes that 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 budget when it comes to adaptive and web-based reporting you have all of the logic of the model behind you and let me let me explain what that means so in the report section we have several different areas for web-based reporting you have personal reports so if somebody wants to come in and create their own report, they can just grab, I'll, I'll show you, you know, creating one from scratch. You just drag and drop and they create one. If you're in a, in a kind of a con consolidated role or a corporate consolidation role and you want to standardize what people are looking at so that you can have some standardization in the web-based reporting, uh, you have that ability uh, to, to create what we call shared reports. Now, the, the beauty of a shared report is it's based on permission, um, but what you have the ability in a shared report is to have folders, so different folders, different people have access to those folders, but then if somebody selects, let's say, the month-end variance report, they have a manager, when they log in, that is, they only see what they have access to. So one of our customers, um, a large uh, food retailer, uh, that the the idea of getting the p and l out to the three hundred locations uh, was taking them sixteen days prior to adaptive and then you're looking at almost immediately after accounting closes and the data is brought into adaptive, the general managers had access to their p and ls so a general manager could log in to a store location and when they log in, they only see what they have access to. So this is a very standard uh, variance analysis report where there's actuals and, and budget. You can have 
three your three different versions of budget on here. You can have an, a, a review or, or variance analysis from an any to any. So any version to any version. This one is kind of your typical month and year to date. A couple of things out here, I'll point out conditional formatting, easy uh, flags. You can add notations, uh, which will, will give the, the who and the, time, the date of, of that, uh, um, you know, this person, wow, 2015. Uh, that's been there for a long time. Um, the idea here, though, is the ability to quickly create a note if you wanted to add a note. Um, but if there's any in the model, any cell notes that are created within the model itself, so let's say I'm a sales north manager and I come in here and, you know, for me, if I'm just the sales north manager, when I run this report, I wouldn't see all of those drop downs. I'd only see sales north. But there is a cell, cell note uh, that comes as a footnote. So those cell notes in the model don't get lost. If you were to do this in, in legacy systems and have a cell note in your Excel file, and you load it up, you've lost that Excel, that cell note. But here in this web-based report, you have it. And what's great is that all of these data points are hyperlinked. So if you're now wanting to see, well, uh, uh, 5,000, okay, well, there it is. There's the note. Uh, you could view the audit trail to see who put made the change. But if I come into the part of the model where that number is representative in my expenses, so there's the $5,000. I mean, everybody has an Excel file that looks something like this. Green is actual, black is uh, forecast. So I've got my actual and forecast here. And maybe I want to make a change and say, no, that actually should have been $25,000. So this is the, the, the power of having everything in one place, the model and the reporting, is I make a change. And because I am in um, an in-memory solution, if I come back and all I have to do is refresh my browser, that 25,000 is instantly available to see. So gone are the days of, okay, everybody, everybody has to get out. We're gonna go ahead and, and run the batch script to, to get this to roll up. You don't have that anymore. So this rolls up from the very top, the very bottom. You, know, you have that ability to see the latest and greatest in your web-based reports. So a lot of us have spent lots of time creating a report and then sending it out in Excel. As soon as you send that report out in an email in Excel, it's now static. If there's a change, you gotta you know, rinse and repeat. With web-based reports, all of that data is available. You have your managers, whoever come in, uh, they, can, they can explore the data. We actually had auditors. We had gave them a, a certain section of a flex report uh, and they only had uh, you know certain spaces they could play in, but they had the ability to drill in and see see the information. Um, that's, so that's from a great. CFO's perspective, having all of this data available is is super easy. And you know I'll, we'll get some uh, comments, and uh, if there's any questions, I'll go ahead and uh, you know after that after a few minutes, I'll go ahead and show uh, how to create these reports from scratch. Yeah, and I was just gonna say, I mean, uh, this would be even great. I know we're not talking about um, forecast and planning, but like if you were comparing um, your uh, latest forecast to your annual budget or or the you know last forecast, and you're sitting in a meeting with your um, business partner, you can quickly just change numbers and show them here is what it looks like now in terms of variance. Yeah. Yeah. So that's great. Um, so um, you know, let's uh, bring Corey back. Um, uh, so, Corey, um, you know, how often do you use um, this type of reporting? And I know I'm, I'm sure you meet with your business uh, partners or your uh, department um, owners, you know, frequently to go through actuals or, or variances or just talk about, you know, what's going on um, on the side of the world and, you know, how they're looking at things. Yeah, so, I mean, in this part of adaptive, um we we send our monthly financials out uh, once a month, and uh, like we talked about before, I mean, in the past they had PDFs that would send out, and I think that took them, you know, half a day or a day. Whereas now, as soon as you get it into Adaptive, you create the report and you know send an email out, and everybody has access to it. Um, and yeah, it's very similar where we have the 
the month, and then we have the year to date. Um, and then we're able to compare, you know, the different versions that we have. It's the actuals to the budget, and then also to whichever the, the new forecast we have. Um, and then, yeah, every once in a while, you know, I'll have a business unit leader reach out to me, you know, kind of have an idea or, you know, hey, can can we run this report? And then, um, you know, it's as easy as, you know, it's, yeah, you're more working on the formatting of the report versus gathering the data and getting it in. And then, yeah, yeah it's easy and, enough to share with them. And then you have more time to kind of analyze the numbers. So looking at the variances rather than not having any time and just sending over the information. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Um, um, Eric, we have one question. Um, they're asking if you can import information from QuickBooks Enterprise and any point of sale systems. Uh, yeah, you, you can. I, I mean, it would, I, I think we do on prem. Uh, if, if you have an on premise, I think QuickBooks Enterprise, I, I can't remember if it's something you. Uh, access from the web or if it's something that uh, is downloaded but we have the ability to connect to either and we do have uh, point of sales you know connections uh, it depends on what you're bringing over and what you're trying to analyze um, so yeah we can we can do it so okay all right thank you and then you were going to show us how this can be how you can you know create this from scratch yeah so uh, the way that I want to approach this is actually to show a little bit of the flexibility of the actual modeling perspective. So I'd like sure. you guys to kind of look at the time right now and see how long it takes me to do this. So let me set this up. So this is a real world example. We were halfway through our budget and our um, HR representative came and said, hey guys, uh, we're going to have a 30% increase in our uh, our healthcare premiums are going up. We have to, you know, contract with a new uh, contractor, and they're they're saying 30% increase. And the CFO, and you know, this is the persona that we're going through. The CFO came to me and said, "Well, what does that impact to our expenses? You know, what? Tell me what that impact is." And this is exactly how I answered that question. And we talk about ad hoc all the time. So the first thing that I would have done, and I'll just show you how to do it, is go and create a new version. So I took a copy of our working version and I just made it, you know, what if, what if 30% increase in premiums or healthcare or whatever, right? That might, might be health uh, head count, but 30% increase dot, dot, dot. Uh, and then I just went ahead and created this really quickly. Uh, but while this is uh, creating a new version, you can lock versions, you can hide versions, you can make read only, uh, you can block people from seeing it. You can make a group that sees it. So there's a lot of flexibility here in versioning. But this is really a, a powerful tool when it comes to uh, adaptive is creating these versions very quickly and easily. Um, and then you could do um, kind of a rolling forecast. So if you wanted to do, you know, let's say a forecast uh, version uh, that goes out 10, 10 or 15 uh, years, you can go ahead and do that. So in, I don't know, that was probably 30 seconds, I created a complete copy of the working budget. And now, let me show you how I do this. I would go to my assumptions, which we had an assumption uh, for what the, um, what the, uh, the health benefit plan was. So here's my 30% increase. And that, that version is immediately available. I didn't have to do any batching. So I'd come here to the, you know, 2021 and make an adjustment of 30%. Let's do a percentage here. We'll do 30% and save. All right. So I think I'm on minute two. And now let me create a brand new from scratch report that looked at the variances between those. So brand new report. Come in here. I want to grab my versions because I just had that uh, what if. So I've got my working budget, what if version. We've got some kind of canned calculations. So I'm just going to grab that difference. I always changed it to variance, but you could do variance percent, value, et cetera. Uh, and then what year So or what time horizon. So this is, if this is daily, you can bring daily. If it's weekly, monthly, seasonal, 
Uh, for this case, I'm just going to grab FY21. And then what is my row selection? Uh, well, I know that my rows are my operating expenses. I'm going to just come in here and drag that in and run the report. So it's not very formatted. It's not very pretty right now. Um, but the idea is you can quickly come to that was a $100,000 issue. That was pretty close to what it was for us. Um, but in the middle of a working budget, you have a what if, you know, 30% increase, and then you've got a $100,000 issue. You can go and answer that question in minutes versus days with other solutions. And this is the power of a web-based report. Like I said, it's like a giant pivot table on steroids. So based on your permission, you just grab row sets and column sets and bring them all in. Uh, you can do some of the formatting as, as, as we talked about. Um, but you know, really, that, that's how you create it. Now, there's other solutions out there that kind of show some drag and drop. But if you really want to create good reports, you've got to kind of tap into the, the, um, the coding of it and, and code your variances or you know, create formulas uh, that would create the variances. Or uh, other solutions, you actually have to create a brand new cube for the variance analysis, where you don't have to do that here. You can do any versus any, and there, you know, there's no issue there. Okay. Now, if you wanted to, you know, there's a question: Can you copy an existing report and modify it? Yeah, you can. Uh, if it's a shared version and you don't have permission to change a shared version, when you hit save, it'll force you to save it as a uh, uh, a personal report. So if I go ahead and try to hit save here name it, you can create it. I have permission to do it as a personal report or a shared report. If I do a shared report, then you can say, well, I want it to all users, or maybe I want to select some of those as well. So um, anyways, um, are there any questions that have come through that I might might be able to answer? Yeah, so there is one that says, is there a quick approach to taking a monthly variance and applying that to one or more future months? Or on the flip side, locking it locking it in as a permanent variance? Yeah, so so because all of the mo because of the model and the and the algorithms and the formulas are captured within uh, adaptive, that is how you build you, you can build your your model to take into consideration uh the actuals so as you bring actuals in you can build the formulas that uh either you want to lock you know i want the the the, ver the variance to be x or you know some some customers will say well i want my my um, number to be forty thousand, uh regardless of my actuals uh you can you know do that as well um anyways um so that, that kind of gives you an idea of, of web-based reporting and kind of the, the modeling aspect of it. Uh, let me just, uh, is there any other questions? Um, um, this is a good one. So um, how does the drag and drop functionality work uh, with when typical coding or development is needed on the backside of other reports? Well, I, I have yet, and maybe Corey, you can answer this, I have yet to know of a of a solution that back end coding is needed. There's yep. no there's no back end coding. I mean you can create a custom calculation if you need to do a custom calculation, but that's as close to the back end reporting or or coding as, as you need it. You just create a formula. Corey, do you, do you have a comment there? Uh yeah, no. I mean kind of like what you said. The only coding that I can think of is, you know, if we have formulas within the model. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't even consider it coding. It's more of just, you know, making sure you're selecting the right accounts for the formulas. Yeah. Yep, and I can attest you know, and there's to that. Some questions here. I was I was gonna say I'm I'm looking at the questions. There's some questions about exporting. You can export it to Excel. You can export it as a PDF. In fact, mm -hmm. anything within Adaptive, you can export to Excel. Um, you, you lose some of the functionality, like being able to drill back in uh, when you do an export. But the next use case, we'll talk about that using our Office Connect, which uh, Corey's already alluded to. It's, it's super easy. Yeah, I was just going to say a lot of people are asking questions about Excel and how this can be done, um, you know, with um, within Excel. So let's. 
Um, unless you have anything else to show our audience, we'll move on to the next uh, persona perspective. Then. All right. All right. So will... our. Thank you. Um, so our last um, persona our perspective um, is from a financial analyst standpoint, right? So you know these are the people who are spending long hours tricking and tying everything, making sure everything looks okay and everything looks pretty enough for the executives or anyone else to see. Um, so let's talk, Eric, let's talk about how all of this can be done in Excel, um, you know, um, using Office Connect and um, even uh, PowerPoint. Okay. Sure. So there's some good questions so that while you were talking, I was looking at some questions that we might be able to get to at the end here. So I just transitioned over to Excel. So there is a pervasive plugin called Office Connect where you have the ability and, and there's somebody, I saw one of the questions that uh, talked about um, some, some clunkiness with changing date ranges and, and I'd love to, to talk to you about it because there's lots of different ways you can set up filters. Um, but the idea, and, and by the way, you're going to love uh, some of the enhancements coming out in this next release, which are super cool. I'm, I'm very excited. Uh, but the idea here uh, is you might already have an existing file. In fact, when, when we have some customers that say, I want you to, to show me this exact uh, file uh, using adaptive data, they can send the Excel file, and all you do is drag and drop. So if I wanted taxes and other expenses to be in this report, I could just go like the like the uh, web-based report. You just drag, drop, and refresh. Now, if I have timed out, which I have, because this is towards the end, security feature. Uh, so you have that ability. Um, once you've grabbed that data, and you have now uh, you've now have the opportunity to have adaptive data in Excel. And it's dynamic data. So if, if data changes, you just refresh, that data is already in there. If you have uh, data and you want to drill back in or drill into the data, uh, you can select this and explore cell, and it'll actually open up. I'll do it right now. But it'll actually open up the browser in my other window. So give me a second. I'll put it over here. Uh, and you can, you can see uh, that number actually in the browser. So you know, with Excel, you have that ability to still stay linked to the data. And so the next month comes, uh, if, if you've made all of your dates um, relative to the report date, it is to change the date, it's as simple as changing the date on the report and refreshing all the sheets at once. When you do that, what was once March is April, including, you know, any of the history will shift down with it. So there we go. I've got April data. I've got April working budget, April actuals. Uh, functional P&L has now changed to April. So now you've got this Excel workbook that's got all of the April data updated in you know, kind of a one click. And then if you have a PowerPoint presentation, a board meeting, and you want to come here, all you'd have to do is single sign on, log in, and refresh. So now I have an April board meeting, including all of my charts and graphs are now April data. So gone are the days of kind of copying and pasting uh, from one from, from Excel into PowerPoint. I remember I had to do that prior to Office Connect, and it would take me hours, literally hours. I had 36 charts that looked kind of like this that I had to copy and paste manually, and the CEO wanted them exactly this uh, size and you know these color schemes or whatever and you can get very granular but you then kind of that one touch uh, refresh in fact I was on a call with a, a customer of ours and they had they had talked about office connect and the CFO came in and, and they were had a board meeting and the CFO said oh I said that we were going to review our in this it actually was April actuals um, we're going to review our April actuals and we don't have April in the slide deck yet and the finance manager said, okay, time me. And they said it took them less than a minute and a half to have a brand new report all done. You know, there were some things that they had to tie up, but within a minute, minute and a half, uh, they had a brand new report ready to, uh, to be sent to the board uh, with all the numbers that tick and tie. 
So, you know, that, that is a, a, a testament to the ease of, of updating this. And, you know, I don't know, um, Corey, how you uh, use Office Connect, but it sounds like you do use it. Yeah, yep. We use it. Uh, currently, we use it for our board meetings that are once a quarter. Um, and currently, well, we primarily use it in Excel, but yeah, like you were just showing within the, the PowerPoint deck slides, I know that we have some regional updates that I need to work on implementing. Awesome. Awesome. And then, um, so, if I um, remember, sorry, okay. <laughs> sorry. Um, when I, I remember when, um, you know, I had implemented Adaptive um, back in 2015 at one of the companies I worked for, it was like our board decks and manager reports were already all formatted. So all we had to do is when we got um, Adaptive up and running, we just had to link everything, which was super easy. But I, you know, I didn't have to touch anything in uh, a report that was already formatted though, the way people like to see it. So that was kind of nice. Yep. Yeah, and then once, I mean, and some people think, okay, well, how do I send this? How do I send that file? Well, you just send it. It's an Excel file. You know, if you were to save this, it would be .xls. You know, so then you could send it. Now, I would, we would tend to say that that's not best practices because once again, as soon as you send it, it's static unless they have permission and then they can go in and refresh the data but the idea is you want you want to use adaptive for the use cases that that fit your company and fit your needs so if you're running quickbooks and you want uh, you know a good a good way of of reporting budget and actuals using quickbooks well you just bring the quickbooks data in to adaptive you do your reporting your budget versus actual reporting out of adaptive either the dashboards or web based uh, or here in excel you have that ability, but then all of your budget and your formulas uh, are there uh, within within it. And um, I, I would uh, I would like to, um, to to show one thing. I, I, there was a question about showing a formula. I've talked about formulas quite a bit, and they wanted me to show a formula. Uh, so I just want to show you the formulas within within the uh, adaptive. Uh, they're not they're not scary. Um, just a second as I log back in as I was kicked out. All right, so I'm in a typical expense sheet here that has you know some links to other parts, but then there's some formulas. So if I click on new hire training, you know, here's the new hire training. It looks at the account because everything's an account, looks at the start month, and then the assumption for the new hire sales training. Think of these as Excel formulas, uh, but instead of C3 times B21, it's like, what is C3? Well, C3 is those that are starting this month, okay? What was B21? Well, that was my new higher sales assumption. Uh, likewise, here, telephone. But the, this is where we depart from kind of typical uh, things that I've seen, is if you have a formula, you can explore the formula and see each individual component. So if you want to look at, well, what is the 4.74 FTEs, you can actually click on that number and based on permission, you can see who makes up that number. And I always laugh. I say, you know, Excel, uh, was it trace dependencies? When you have a very, uh, you know, kind of convoluted report book and you're linked to others, it kind of falls flat pretty quickly. But this ability to explore cell and explore on the formulas you have that ability to explore on each of the individual components of that formula. So I wanted to just kind of uh, touch on that as I've I've seen uh, uh, there was a question about some some formulas, and you don't have to memorize formulas. Uh, you know everything. You have a formula builder that you can build your formulas up. You've got lo you know logistical. You've got you know all of the different formula types. You know, and some people are like, oh, that, that, that doesn't look like Excel formulas. Well, it, it's very similar to Excel formula, but it's a, it's a lot more uh, elegant. You don't have to worry about time. So as you go across time here, uh, my formula doesn't change. So I don't have to worry about like where my dollar sign is and am I linking the right, you know, it's all, that's all built, you know, kind of out of the box functionality. 
All right. Got it. Um, yeah, I think you've answered a lot of the questions already. I was just going through different questions. Um, I don't know if you have anything um, else you want to point out. No, I think I think that's it. We covered we covered the three use cases that we were wanting, like dashboards and seeing the data visualization. You saw how easy that was by dragging and dropping. We talked about web-based reporting and how that is. You, you use that for internal reporting. You can send an email. You can send, you know, send that off uh, for people. Uh, it tends to send a link. So there's a question in here. The idea that that Adaptive's trying to drive is to get out of the static report mode. That is, that is very prevalent in finance today, which is static reports. We don't want people to have static reports. That is kind of old school. Send a, send a static report. You've lost the connectivity. You've lost that ability to drill in. You've lost that ability. Now, can you do it? A absolutely. Send a, send a report. Um, but the idea is we want people to be engaged in the data because data is alive. Data stay, you know, doesn't stay static for very long. I've had times where I've printed out a budget report, and by the time the ink dries, I have to create a new one because something's changed. So, you know, that idea of static reports is just not, and it's not kind of the the flavor of the day. Yeah, I agree. All right, we're almost at the top of the hour. Um, if we didn't get to answer your questions. Um, during the chat, um, we'll be sure to get back to you separately. So don't worry, we're not ignoring you. And then um, I think there is, I think you've already summarized my key takeaways, Eric. So I'll skip that slide and we'll just go on to our last poll that we accidentally launched earlier. So um, we'll have um, one people on the back end will launch our- Can you relaunch poll, it? Um, yeah, 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 we'll relaunch it. Um, Cool. So we just want to kind of get to know a little bit about you guys, what you're interested in, you know, going forward from here so that, you know, if we do get in touch with you, we know uh, what you're looking for. And um, with that, um, Corey, do you have any last minute um, things that you would like to say to our audience um, in terms of what you've learned from um, Adaptive or just in general today? Um, I just know that, you know, again, I've started, you know, when I started with Harris, we implemented adaptive, but, um, I just know that my job would be a lot more difficult if I didn't have the, the software. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good to know. <laughs> and I know when, uh, you know, with some of the reports that we do out of Office Connect, I, I know they're good when I show the controller what we're able to do and they about fall out of their chair. All yeah. right. Okay. All right. So with that, I want to thank you, Corey, um, for taking the time to um, speak today. And then, of course, Eric, for showing our audience, you know, all these cool um, things within Adaptive, uh, including different types of reporting. Um, and then, you know, want to thank our audience for being here today. Um, so thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. All right, take care.